Hello, and welcome to the People's Mental Stimulus Update. In today's update, we're talking about Republicans and their past beliefs to their current behaviors. In the past, they believed in the anti-Jacksonianism, American nationalism. They also believed in economic nationalism and the American school classical conservation. This is what they believed for in the past. The National Republican Party, also known as the Anti-Jackson Party, or simply the Republicans, was a political party in the United States that involved that basically involved involved a frac evolved from a fraction of the dramatic the Democratic Party that supported John Quincy Adams in 1824's presidential election. Known initially as Adam Clay's Republicans, in the wake of the 1824 campaign, Adams' political allies in Congress and at state levels were referred to as Adams' men during his presidency from 1825 to 1829. Wasn't that nice? So does that, does that mean that all the people that are following Trump right now are Trump's men? That includes the ladies that are following him too because... They're not acting too bright because of they're following a narcissist terrorist and they're calling him his their god. So does that does that make them his men? Hmm. I'll have to figure that out a bit later, right? And let's see here. When Andrew Jackson became president following his victory in 1828 election, this group became the opposition and organized themselves as an anti-Jackson, the term National Republican, dates from 1830s. Henry Clay served as the uh, party's nominee in 1832, 1832 elections, but was defeated by Jackson, and the party supported Clay's American system of nationality, finance, and internal improvements and a protected tariff. A tariff is a tax by a by the government or a country or a multi a mega nation, I guess we call it, uh, on imports and exports of goods besides being a source of revenue for the government, import duties can also be a form of regulation of foreign trade and policy. So that's what that's what tariff is. I figured I'd look it up for you because I actually didn't know myself. So I thought I'd let you guys know and inform myself in the process. So I gotta thank you guys for actually helping me learn new things because without my viewers, I don't think I'd actually learn a whole lot. So thank you guys. I appreciate that. After 1832 election, um, opponents of Jackson uh, conceded into the Whig Party. Sorry. Yeah, they actually, uh, not conceded, um, what's it called? They basically joined the Whig Party, should we say, or the National Republican. Anti-Masons and others joined the new party as well. So the Republicans are a part of the anti-Mason Whig Party, and so there's a lot of people in there that have a lot of varying opinions. Before the election of John Quincy Adams, to the presidency in 1825, the Democrats and Democrat Republican, sorry, Democratic Republican Party, which had been the only national American political party for over a decade, began to fracture, losing its infrastructure and identity. So basically, the um, Republicans and the Democrats were, I guess, they were not seeing eye to eye, but. That's a story. That's a, a story from another time. <laughs> its caucuses no longer met to select the presidential candidate because now they had separate interests and agendas. The beliefs of the Democratic Republican Party were deeply committed to the principles of republicanism, which they feared were threatened by the supporters' aristocratic tendencies of the um the, the people at that present time and during the 1790s the party strongly opposed 
federalist programs and national banks. Let me give you, a, let me define what a federalist program is for you. So, because it's something I learned as well, so it's something to know. A federalist program is a federalist favor of a weak state government. So basically they do, they oppose having a strong governor or mayor per state, but they do support a stronger centralized government and the indirect election of government officials. So basically they want a very strong Congress, such as the Senate, the House and the Presidency, and they want indirect election of government officials. Well, how more, I mean, and so they don't want the people basically to vote for the government officials. They just want to put them in power. So basically it's a slight dictatorship, if you want, if you, if you will, I mean that one. And let's see here. They want long-term limits for uh, office holders and representatives rather than a direct democracy. So basically we, we've got basically some of the stuff covered up in the Republicans here. The Republicans want a long-term uh, limits for themselves. Hence the fact that's why all these senators out there are actually staying career senators. They're making this job, this job their career and they're probably gonna end up dying in this career unless we can actually give uh, term limits, which is like, I'd be guessing six years. I mean, the president can go to up to two years of four, uh, sorry, two terms, four years each. So why don't we just give the senators one term of six years. If you can't accomplish what you're supposed to do when you get in office at that present time, then maybe you should have never gotten in office in the first place. And like I said, they they don't want democracy. That's exactly how Republicans are nowadays. They don't, don't want democracy. And it's the Georgia governor that signed all those bills into law, basically shortening voting hours, making it so you can't vote on Sundays, and also making it so it is a misdemeanor to basically give a person in a voting line food or water. I'm sorry, but that governor's a moron. Because if you're in a 10-hour line to get ready to vote and you are dying of thirst and have nothing to drink and someone walks up and offers you off a water or something to drink, right? I mean, should they really get charged with a misdemeanor for being, you know, be nice? I don't think so. I mean, that's just wrong. So I think that Georgia governor's a moron. And any governor that falls in his rules, in his footsteps, basically, are idiots too and need to be replaced with some people, more caring people. I mean, we're already learning from uh, one thing of Donald Trump. We already know that he is not a caring person. He never has been. He never will be. I mean, I hate to say this, but I, I, I've learned so much about Donald Trump in the past that it's not even funny. I mean, I learned that this that Donald Trump used to be heavily into narcotics. And in fact, why they call him Diaper Don is because he actually does wear a diaper. I was watching this, this documentary on this, and the guy says that, yeah, we'd actually have to stop filming in the middle of the um, shoot just to have someone go and change his diaper and wipe his ass. Literally speaking, that's what they said. And they said that you could also hear him publicly defecate himself because he cannot control it because all the drugs he took in the past are now catching up to him acting as a laxative. So Diaper Don is going to be in diapers for the rest of his life. So I feel sorry for Melania because that's his wife and, well, she was changing her baby's diapers. That means she had to be changing Diaper Don's diapers too, right? But like, this is my supposition and my opinion. I appreciate everything. Every one of my viewers out there, if you like my content, please hit that like and subscribe button and drop me a comment. I'll answer every comment you have as fast as I can as soon as I get them. But until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening. And I'll broadcast again to you in about two days. Till then, bye. I got this feeling inside my bones. You win the club, just to party. I'm there, I get paid a fee. It's right and I and I won't be. I'm living out in 